Hey, everybody. It's not over yet, so this is going to knock your socks off, OK? We have some students here from Ohio University who are talking about space-based solar power and their applications. And they have these apps that are really, really cool. And they are going to be free for you. And the students are going to tell you all about it. And this is going to be truly, truly amazing. So please give a hand to the Ohio University students. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Kyle Perkins. I run a company in Ohio making video games. But space has been a passion of mine for as long as I can remember, since I first watched Captain Kirk and his crew when I was just a little kid. Um, <laughs> and um, I have to say, I've never followed a congressman, let alone one with some really great ideas. Uh, so this is a little intimidating, but I'm going to do my best here. Um, for the past four years, I've worked with Dr. Don Flournoy and several teams of students from Ohio University with one goal in mind the collaboration of space professionals and media professionals of all different sorts to visualize space solar power and the wireless transmission of energy. It's something that I've seen, uh, this, this is the fourth class of students we've brought to ISTC, and, and these students coming in have known nothing about space solar power. To them, the idea of beaming electricity from space was something that you wouldn't even see in Star Trek. It was wild. But I've seen them, uh, over the course of just a semester, uh, travel from not knowing anything about it to uh, being, I'm, I'm assuming, one of the few groups actually pumping out more than two videos every year, introducing this topic and various applications of this topic, various proposals. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce two extremely ambitious uh, collaborative efforts to bring together space professionals, scientists, engineers, and film crews, animators, video game designers, media professionals. And the first of them is called Sol Invictus, the Unconquered Sun. Sol Invictus, the Unconquered Sun isn't a movie or a video game. It's an interactive app that tells the story of space technology, energy dependence, and the growing crisis of our reliance on non-renewable fuel. We cannot last as a civilization, as global, national, or even local societies without enough energy, and we simply can't turn back the clock when our supply of oil runs dry. There are seven billion people on this planet now. We can't even distribute enough resources as is to provide for them. And that scarcity breeds conflict. Conflict between nations, between religions, between factions in every divided society. Right now, the most important resource in the world is energy. In the future, that resource will only become more important. We need it to grow our food, to pump our water, to shelter our people. Governments, medicine, and communications all rely on energy. Demand is growing, and supply won't last forever. We all know that, but what can we do about it? Here's the thing, it's late, but it's not too late we have energy alternatives. The answer is right above us. The sun is a clean, virtually inexhaustible source of energy, and we can tap into it. On the ground, solar panels are affected by weather, by the atmosphere, or by the mere rotation of the Earth. But in space, satellites can collect vast amounts of solar energy and beam it down safely to receivers all over the world. And I know what you're thinking. It's impossible. The scale of that is too much. It's too expensive, it's dangerous. Well, the truth is, it isn't. The science for this exists. The technology is real. The resources we are already allocating to non-renewable, carbon-emitting fuels are much more expensive and more destructive than we will ever realize. At this point in time, our reliance on old energy seems unavoidable. It seems to be our only option, but it doesn't have to be. Together we can design, and more importantly build, the next generation of solar power satellites that utilize reusable launch vehicles with converted power plants and grids to solve this problem. The power of the sun remains unconquered, but not for long. It isn't too expensive, it isn't too audacious, and it isn't too late. You can do this. We can do this. Together we can conquer the unconquered sun.
Thank you, thank you. The most exciting thing is that that video is just the introduction. It's one of many, and that number is growing every year that Dr. Flannoy, well, as long as he continues paying me anyway, uh, as long as we keep making these videos, and students like my team, stand up, guys, and students like my team, <clears throat> As long as they keep understanding, and as long as everyone understands that anybody with a technical research paper, anybody with an idea, a scientist, together working with media professionals, there's nothing we can't accomplish. As, as the congressman put it, we live in an era where right now one of you could be filming this on your phone, and you could send that to a thousand friends, or maybe with a little more luck and, uh, and some effort, you could send it to a million people, put it on YouTube, and that's incredible. And that's the power of social media, and that's the power of this app. So this is a rough version of Sol Invictus, The Unconquered Sun. This app will be available on tablet-sized devices, as well as Mac and PC, and also streaming over the web. Uh, you can see here we have uh, an interface. Uh, it's, it's the Earth. You can scroll around it. And each of these locations will trigger a, a, uh, a specific video. Some are proposals. Some are applications. Some, like the introduction uh, video you watched, are meant to educate people who've never heard of space-based solar power and its associated uh, industries and, and ideas. And that was the first video right there, the introduction. Every video you see here we've created over the past four years, and there are several that aren't finished and in the app. Uh, topics such as space mirrors, such as supporting agriculture in India, disaster relief, many related things. Um, and the beauty of this is, if you are a scientist with an idea, or if you are a media team looking for experience, this brings you together. It, it's, a, it's a truly collaborative effort. And the second exciting thing that I have to announce today is the International Sunset Design Competition. We are trying to expand this beyond Ohio, beyond Ohio University, and make it a global effort. Any student or professional media team looking for experience, any scientist with an idea, we can be your, uh, your network. Come through us, um, and, and at the end of a year-long competition cycle, cash prizes will be available, um, sort of like a smaller X prize, if you will. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and watch a video that was the uh, first video created by this class back in 2010. And it was the perfect example of what we're trying to do. Uh, Kent Tabiska had an idea to repurpose a, a several oil rigs off the California coast into receiving stations. And he came to our team to visualize that. Today, 27 oil rigs are spread out along the Southern California coast, and 10 of these have now ceased production. Federal regulations require that all offshore oil and gas platforms be completely removed when they reach the end of their operational lifetimes. By the year 2025, none of these will remain. Though each of these platforms cost roughly $200 million to construct, it may cost as much as $1 billion to remove them. That's $1 billion per platform. What could be done with $27 billion if there was a way to keep these platforms in place and to utilize them for other purposes? What if that money could be used to produce fresh water and develop alternative energy to lessen California's dependence on oil? What if these platforms served as receiving antennas for the power beams of space solar satellites running saltwater desalination plants and the excess energy used to power homes cities, and industries in California. In time, the hydrocarbons on which we depend will become more and more scarce and expensive. The pollution they cause will be less acceptable. It is not hard to imagine a future without power. But there is a solution. 
For more than 40 years, scientists have dreamed of powering cities on Earth with solar energy beamed from space. Today, solar panels are in use in space, powering communication satellites. But to power cities and industries, a new type of satellite with a much larger solar array in space is one that is going to be needed. Now under consideration are the new sunsats or power sats that will capture energy from the sun in quantities far greater than anything we have today, transmitting energy to receiving antennas on Earth. Offshore drilling rigs are suitable platforms for conversion into sunsat receiving stations. As these rigs reach the end of their life as suppliers of oil, they can be repurposed as terrestrial power stations, providing an alternative source of clean energy. Their location offshore also makes them prime candidates for water desalination. Already outfitted with small desalination plants providing fresh water to crew, larger and more advanced equipment will make them prime providers of water for onshore users. One of these units can be scaled to provide fresh drinking water for a small city of 50,000 people. The excess power not used for desalination can be used to supplement the electrical power grids along the coast. This technology is still in development, but with support it will become an operational reality, providing a new source of clean energy and fresh water for future generations. So, uh, now I have a couple of favors to ask of you. The first, uh, the, the two newest videos that my students produced this year, that our students produced, uh, they'll be shown at Dr. Lewis Frass's presentation on um, reflected sunlight to support ground PV solar. Uh, another video will be shown at Dr. Flournoy and Dr. Narayanan Komarath's presentation on the Five Nation Wireless Power Transfer Experiment utilizing the ISS. And we've produced two visualizations this year to augment and support their presentations. Do check those out. I'm not sure how much time I have left here. I could potentially show more, but I don't want to bore anybody. Um, so uh, the, the second favor I have to ask of you is to please stop by our booth in the expo floor. Check out our competition. If you have an idea, if you're a media student or if you're a media professional looking for some experience or, or some, uh, some pro bono work, please come by. Please talk to us. Um, we're also running an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign to uh, develop and support the competition and primarily prizes to uh, bring international teams to the next ISDC, which is in LA, I believe. Um, and so stop by, uh, come chat with us, and thank you very, very much for your time.